Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So all of the objects that you see here are examples of matter. And mass is the amount of matter in an object. So when we measure an object's mass, we're measuring how much matter is in the object. To measure mass, we use scales and balances. Now we might use a pan balance, an electronic scale, or a triple beam balance, but all of these instruments measure mass, and all of them measure mass in grams. The amount of space something takes up is called its volume, and volume is measured using a graduated cylinder. And you can see a graduated cylinder here. It's basically just an empty tube with lines on it. So when I pour something in like this blue liquid, I can see how much space it takes up. Volume is measured in milliliters. So each line on this graduated cylinder represents one milliliter. The density of a substance determines whether it floats or sinks. And when we talk about something's relative density, we're talking about whether it's more or less dense than something else. And so we'll be talking about whether things are more or less dense than water. Objects that are less dense than water float. So wood, cork, foam, and many plastics are less dense than water. And you can see here that all of these substances are floating. And objects that are more dense than water sink. So it's important that you understand that metals, glass, and rubber are all more dense than water, so they sink. We can also talk about the relative density of liquids and whether liquids float or sink in water. Liquids that are less dense than water float. And you can see here that this lamp oil is less dense than water because it's floating on the surface of the water. And liquids that are more dense than water sink. This syrup sank to the bottom of the test tube and formed a layer beneath the water. That's because syrup is more dense than the water. Conductors are materials that allow heat and electricity to pass through them easily. And it's very important that you understand that metals make the best conductors. That's why we make pots and pans out of metal. They allow heat to go through them easily while we're cooking. And you can see that this aluminum is allowing electricity to pass through it easily, and that allows the light bulb to glow in our conductivity tester. But insulators are materials that slow down the flow of heat and electricity, and nonmetals like wood, plastic, and rubber make the best insulators. You can see here that this wood spoon is in the hot water, but it's not too hot to touch. That's because wood is an insulator of heat. And so even though the wood spoon is inside the hot water, it takes a long time for that wood spoon to heat up because it's an insulator of heat. And electricity is not flowing through the plastic dinosaur very easily. And so you can see the light bulb is not glowing on our conductivity tester. Magnets come in many shapes and sizes, but only certain materials are magnetic. This means that they are attracted to a magnet. Only a few materials like iron and steel are attracted to magnets. So all of the things you see here that are attracted to a magnet, including the nail, the paper clip, and the safety pin are all made of iron and steel. But most materials, including most metals, are not attracted to magnets. That's why the glass, plastic, wood, and even the copper and aluminum are not being attracted to those magnets. It's because they're not magnetic. All metals are conductors, but not all metals are magnetic. So it's very important that you understand that just because something is a metal does not mean that it will be attracted to a magnet. If a substance is soluble in water, that means it will dissolve. So the salt, the powdered drink mix, and the sugar were all solids. And I put those solids into the water, and they dissolved and became evenly mixed with the water, creating liquid solutions. Substances that are not soluble in water do not dissolve. I can also call these insoluble substances. So you can see that the sand and the chalk powder are solids that just sank to the bottom of the cup 
and they are not dissolving. The vegetable oil is an insoluble liquid, and you can see that that vegetable oil is clearly not mixing with the water. Materials can also exist in different physical states. The three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. So if you're ever asked about the physical state of matter, you're being asked about whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. The different physical states have different properties. Solids keep their shape and volume. Liquids keep their volume, but they take the shape of their container. And gases take the shape of their container and they spread out across the entire volume of the container. We'll discuss each of these physical properties more over the coming weeks, but hopefully this video has helped introduce you to the physical properties you'll need to master. Keep up the great work. We'll see you next time.